The acquisition of the Star Tribune had a few challenges that could have prevented the purchase. A strong initial group of six local investors would lose numbers. An established CEO would consider retirement, and the overall challenges of the newspaper publishing industry would create challenges that Glenn would have to overcome. The Star Tribune had gone through bankruptcy. Some uh, equity group came in and eventually bought it out. They then said that they were going to put it up for sale. And some businessmen in the Twin Cities uh, said they were involved. And one of them called me and said, would you come up and meet with us? So I went up there. I remember at the Minneapolis club that we met and there were six of us. And they said, well, why don't we put a deal together, buy it, keep it as a, all would be local. So we'd have local ownership, and that seemed to be the priority. So we started out with six of us, looked at it. And I don't know whatever happened, but uh, eventually there was five of us, and then there was four of us. And we kept working on the deal, trying to get a price that would be reasonable. It was, it was a tough negotiation with these equity group, and uh, eventually got down to two of us that uh, we're going to do it. And we went ahead and uh, came up with a price. Eventually, it took us that long to come up with a price to buy it. And at the last minute, the other person that was going to be my partner that I knew and stuff said that uh, a family member of his would uh, said that uh, he didn't want him to get involved in it and stuff like this there. So he stepped out at the last minute, and I was the last man left to do it. And, uh, you know, maybe I should have just walked away like everybody else did. But the way I looked at it, it was a little bit that this was an important asset in Minnesota. It was never going to be a money raiser. It was always going to be difficult. But my whole life, I've taken on challenges and stuff like this, and this would be a big challenge and something that I think that I might be remembered for to taking on the challenge. And that always interests me because that's about why I ran for the Senate and why I ran for the chairman of the board of the NBA. I might as well be in leadership and things like that. So eventually uh, I negotiated with these guys a price. I got, since I was the only guy left, I probably negotiated a little bit better price because they knew they were only dealing with one person. And I went ahead and did the purchase. Um, I had one critical uh, decision to make uh, before that. I met the the CEO of the paper, Mike Clarence Smith was his name, and I really liked him, and he was really sharp. He was getting ready for retirement and told me that he would probably be retiring in the next uh, two years, stuff like this there. And I told him that I wouldn't go ahead with the purchase, even though I had agreed with everything, unless he stayed. And he uh, said, okay, I'll stay for a couple of years for sure for you. And, uh, and we made the decision of him staying. And I went ahead and made the purchase. I don't think I ever heard Glenn say the words, Mike, if you don't stay, I'm not gonna buy the newspaper. But he made it very clear that that was the case. Uh, and uh, so it, it was, I don't, there was any confusion about that, that, that uh, I was going to have to commit uh, to a certain amount of time. And, and I'd committed to two years with Glenn, and of course I stayed seven. So uh, clearly uh, we got along great. Uh, but the reason I did it, and, and here's the irony of uh, the timing in this uh, commitment to stay with the Star Tribune, about three months into the negotiation process. It was about a six month negotiation process. Uh, my prior company, uh, Time Warner in New York, had made the decision to spin off the publishing company, Time Incorporated, which is the company that I came from and spent 32 years of my whole career at that publication before retiring uh, from there in 2008. Well, they uh, had made a decision at Time Warner to spin off Time Incorporated, and they were looking for a CEO to come back and run what would be a, basically a $4 billion private uh, public company. 
uh, based in Manhattan. And uh, wouldn't you know, after years of working at the company and aspiring to someday be the CEO, they chose this moment in time to call me and ask me to come back and be the CEO of a publicly traded uh, Time Incorporated. Uh, at, at the same moment that Glenn had just made it clear to me that he wasn't going to buy the newspaper uh, if I were to leave. So there was my quandary and I sort of agonized over that decision, but I looked at uh, where I was in my career, I looked at the community I lived in, which I was very attached to, uh, and uh, decided to go with Glenn. And I, I felt really that the job at the newspaper, although it wasn't as big a company, uh, I knew it had been fun to work with, it had been a challenge, and I knew that it was important. Uh, so I decided to just, uh, on the, the bit I knew of Glenn, to trust that that was the right move. And I have to say, looking back, uh, I've never second-guessed that decision uh, to stay with Glenn and the Star Tribune. It's only lately that Mike has now announced his retirement after he, a couple of times he said he was going to retire. <laughs> then he says, I like working with you so much, I'm going to stay. So we have just lately uh, hired a new CEO, and I'm really excited about that in the future. So we have uh, run the paper really done well i mean even in the very difficult i think when you look nationally as the local papers were always in the top five papers in the nation as far as uh, material we put out uh, the probability stuff that that we we paid down um most of our debt and that we borrowed some money and we've paid down most of that i think two-thirds of that already um, and we have, uh, my daughter Jean came in immediately and became chairman of the board. I really like that. It gave us a chance to work together and to do that. She really took an active part. Uh, she was over there, uh, all the time and stuff and trying to help me. I didn't have to do very much on that. She pretty much took care of it. So that was a really big plus for me. Uh, that Mike, we got along with Mike so well, she got along with Mike so well, that we were able to pay off so much of the debt and still run the paper was really important. So the industry is sort of split into uh, three groupings. There are the nationals, uh, which I define as uh, a newspaper that prints uh, nationwide. So that would be your New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and to a lesser extent, USA Today. Those are the big people who play on a national platform substantially greater scale than we have as a regional paper. The regionals are the metro papers. There's five really that we look to uh, and uh, we count ourselves very much uh, uh, with that group. But that would be the Washington Post, Boston Globe, Los Angeles Times, Dallas Morning News, Star Tribune. We probably are in the middle of that pack. Those are people who are still investing in journalism. They care deeply about the product. They care about servicing their community, even in these large metros. Uh, and they are all owned by people who share some common characteristics with Glenn. They're in this as a business, but at the same time, uh, they're not in it to cut costs, maximize profits, uh, pr uh, dividend out cash back to them. So that's the second group. The third group um, are the groups that unfortunately have been uh, taken over by private equity or hedge funds who basically are making a financial play to kind of... Uh, you know, run these businesses until they're, they're drained of cash and then uh, they're probably shut down in the future. So unfortunately, some of the great former papers of the U.S., like the Chicago Tribune, fall into that third category. So we're very fortunate to be where we are. We're proud to be a, a company that aspires to growth, that aspires to innovation. Uh, and, uh, and we can only do that because of our ownership. I was asked and I enjoyed meeting all the employees, getting around in different groups and talking to them there interesting people, the, the writers, and, and uh, I, did, I did enjoy that. So uh, where we sit now is we're bringing in a new leadership team and there's some other people that will be retiring. So there's gonna be a big change in the leadership. Um, it's appropriate because we're changing to digital and uh, we need to do that. And I think probably younger people will be more hands on that and we'll move faster than we would otherwise. So 
Um, we're looking, you know, to the future. How do we best uh, look at the ownership? Uh, and uh, right now, we're just going to keep running it and see how well it goes. Glenn was never uh, one to uh, even uh, attempt to interfere with the process of journalism or the opinion writing. Uh, he gave us direction at the highest strategic level that was very helpful. He gave us his good business judgment, uh, but he really let us run the paper day to day. I asked Glenn and Mike about the overall paper industry, the move to digital, and the accompanying challenges the paper faces. I also asked Mike why Glenn has been the right owner for the Star Tribune. When you look across the nation uh, right now, you have a couple of uh, papers that are national papers that are doing pretty well, and the New York Times. But after that, it drops down to, um, I can think of three other papers that are kind of regional or city uh, papers that are doing well, including the Tribune. And, and then it drops off completely. You've got a bunch of papers that are owned by huge companies, but they're all losing money. So it's going to be difficult for them to stay in there. The small town papers, a lot of them have drifted back to one once a week type of paper. A lot of them are shutting down. Our paper, the Tribune is looking at how do we, how can we service these smaller communities with our papers? Personally, I believe we can do a better job digital. They'll get the news faster out there quicker and we can, and cheaper because delivery is very expensive. So uh, um, we're looking at trying to make it better and, and grow it, but uh, I've always understood that it's not something where I'm gonna make money on. I've always understood that it's gonna be a challenge, but that my whole life has been that way. Today, the Star Tribune has 100,000 uh, digital subscribers and it has roughly 100,000 uh, print readers between subscribers and single copy sales. In the future, uh, that number uh, is going to be, uh, have to be about 250,000 digital subscribers. And we hope that we can hold on to, let's say, maybe 50,000 print subscribers. Uh, there are some people who just really want to read the paper and print. That's the way they like it. It'll be most likely those people who are more centered in the, in the bigger cities and the Twin Cities. Uh, but the digital franchise really has to grow. The New York Times took their overall uh, di their uh, digital subscription base uh, from uh, 1 million subscribers to 5 million subscribers over the course of about three years. So it really can grow exponentially if you've got the right product matched uh, to the right market. But for us, if you look forward um, and, uh, and our new leadership would say the same thing, we're probably looking for a quarter million digital subscribers in a three to five year time frame. I think one of the interesting things that I have learned about being in different industries is to take ideas from one industry and move them to another industry. So in our printing plants and stuff like this here, we put in new technology. A lot of times that means that where we had four people working on a piece of equipment, we can move it down to one or two. So as we've moved into places like the paper, which are very traditional because they have been around for a long period of time, people and the people that do it, they think that they're special, that their job is like no others and this type of stuff. And quite frankly, that's true of all plants when I go into it. Everybody thinks that what they do is special. But technology can change things in almost every area. So where people are in news and, and gathering information, that's changing rapidly. And we in the newspaper business have to figure it out just as we have in the other printing businesses or service businesses. We have to learn to do it, get the same type of material out or even more material with less people. So. You learn that through uh, the purchase of new technology or developing it itself. You learn that in how you gather information that there's speedier ways to do that. I think previously, a lot of times you thought you had to run out to the to visit people. Now you can get a lot of that information over Zoom and, and places and stay at your, this type of stuff. I think uh, a lot of it's that, well, we need somebody with 10 years of experience. 
now I think we have young people coming out of school that know that information and you don't need 10 years of experience. You can put a person in there with a lot less experience and they can do a very capable job. So what I've learned is that you can pick up in ideas in different industries and move them to uh, new industries that you're investing in. Glenn has been the right owner because his motives for ownership are exactly right. And they're, by the way, they are across the country. People are jealous of the ownership that the Star Tribune wound up with. And the reason is that Glenn put together a financial structure for the paper uh, that was appropriate for our size and scale and our future prospects. So instead of layering it up with debt, uh, he, he gave us a responsible uh, amount of leverage that we could handle and pay off uh, over a period of time. Uh, and that meant that we could take money that otherwise we would have had to pay interest with and we could hire journalists and graphic artists and uh, salespeople and marketers. Uh, so uh, that was really uh, the first part. The second part was we came to an understanding with Glenn that uh, he uh, wanted us to be self-sufficient. Uh, he was not going to continue to sort of make contributions to the Star Tribune. He wanted a business formula and for us to come up with a business plan uh, that we could sustain uh, our financial structure. Uh, but he was not going to dividend cash out of the business back to himself. And that was key. That was such a generous arrangement uh, that it enabled us to run the company like a business, to be responsible commercially, but not uh, be uh, sending our cash back to ownership. The question you ask about making changes in the future, I think one intrigues me about myself. You know, I look at my age and where I'm at, and yet I find myself in meetings and stuff that a lot of times I'm the one that's encouraging the changes. You know, when you would think about it, it would be like, well, when you were 20 years old and 30 years old, you should have been making the changes. But probably when I was at that age, I was so worried about making enough money to pay pay for the next thing that I probably didn't uh, always be willing to invest. Now that we, I have been successful in lots of different things, I think I just have confidence in my decisions. And I find myself in meetings that uh, I'm surrounded by really bright, good people, which is really fun. But no matter what they say and how much they want to do, I find myself saying, oh, you sure you can't do 10% better? <laughs> or can't you do more? Can't we do it quicker? It's pretty much how my conversations always go when, when I meet with my leaders. I like that I, I still can do that. I like that that I'm on top of stuff that I can still challenge them. I like it that they appreciate it and they pick up on most of these things and probably better me by one anyway. But... Uh, uh, it's something that we do. I think it just comes natural for me. I, I can't tell you um, anything. You know, it, it'd be one of those things that I use kind of a this thing. It's like I say, it's a God-given gift. I can't explain it other than it's there and it works and I just keep using it. You know, I'll forever be appreciative of the fact that uh, Glenn made the investment in the Star Tribune, uh, that he really is responsible for uh, sustaining the organization on into the future and setting a platform for it to have success going forward. And I just, uh, I really would just like to thank Glenn for that uh, on the record because, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, people aren't thanked for the contributions they've made. A lot of what he's done is behind the scenes, uh, but it's been critically important. And, uh, and all of us at the Star Tribune and, and myself in particular are thankful for everything Glenn has done to support us. I think it's a great asset for Minnesota. It's a, a method of communications. It's a method of arguing or finding about uh, what's going on. And if I can do that to contribute to that many people in Minnesota, I'll be proud of that. Uh, where it'll end up in 20 years from now, I have no knowledge of which might change. But in the next five years, I think we'll, we'll be working towards uh, improving it, making changes. Uh, so I guess part of it is just the pride and the history that will come with it that uh, Glenn Taylor stepped forward to do it when nobody else would. And uh, I, um, 
I uh, hear that a lot. I mean, I just last evening, I had a number of people that came up to me and said, thank you for doing what you're doing with the paper and, and the timber wolves and the businesses and employment of people. And so people acknowledge it and appreciate it. Well, I like hearing that. And, um, but more important, I think it's just that uh, I think uh, we're providing good jobs for people. We're providing information for people through the paper and we're providing entertainment through the sports teams.